Hey everybody, welcome back to the Working Man's Whiskey. I'm Bobby. Uh, guys, uh, during my review yesterday, told you guys that uh, I was going to do a couple of uh, reviews that I on things that I wanted to do. Uh, one of them uh, is going to be uh, one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. Um, that'll be my uh, next review. Uh, great single barrel that I got for an awesome price. And I'm uh, really excited about uh, telling you guys about that one. Uh, but today, uh, for this review, I wanted to do um, some of my favorite bottom shelf whiskeys, guys. And uh, I'll tell you right now, I'm putting all three of these head to head. Uh, we got Old Crow, um, we got Jim Beam, classic white label, and uh, Evan Williams Black. And uh, I'll tell you right now, though, these, I mean, I love all these whiskeys. You know, each one of these is. Uh, definitely worth this weight in gold that's where um you know they're all bottom shelf whiskeys this one here old crow is uh was 9.99 and uh, both the uh, jim beam and the evan William, uh, williams were uh 10.99 a piece um so we're talking great prices all the way around um you know there are some whiskeys out there uh that aren't as good for that price, but at this price point, guys, uh, talking right around 10 bucks, um, you know, these are some of the best you're gonna find, in my opinion. Um, the Old Crow here um, and the Jim Beam here are actually somewhat connected. Um, there are a couple differences um, between these two, but they're they're both the Jim Beam product. Um, you know, all three of these are, uh, you know, historical names as far as whiskey goes. Um, Old Crow didn't used to be part of, uh, it didn't used to be part of the Jim Beam line, uh, but they were bought uh, years back uh, by Jim Beam. And um, pretty much what Old Crow is, is uh, with, with a couple differences in there. Um, Old Crow is Jim Beam white label um, that's been aged for three years instead of four. Um, and uh, there are, as I said, a couple more differences, but same uh, same mash they use in both whiskeys, um, you know, same uh, recipe and all that. So uh, these two are pretty close, um, you know, uh, taste-wise. Uh, Jim Beam, I'll I'll tell you guys my opinions on, uh, on these in a minute, but uh, you know, Jim Beam, you know, it's going to be. Uh, a little bit different just because it's aged for that extra year so we're talking three years uh age wise four years with jim beam and evan williams is about um somewhere between four to six years uh and evan williams is uh, not part of the jim beam line of course uh, evan williams is a heaven hill product so um but i couldn't wait to do this one guys i really wanted to share with you guys some of my favorite bottom shelf whiskeys some of the best values that i think you can find uh, on the bottom shelf so uh, here we are. So uh, let's pour, we've got three different glasses guys so we don't get them mixed up. Um, got some water to kind of cleanse the palate a little bit. Put this off to the side for now. So we'll put the Old Crow into this glass here. I'm gonna pour a little bit less than usual just because uh, we're dealing with three whiskeys here instead of one or two. So um, Old Crow in that, that first glass there. We'll go Jim Beam and this guy here. and then Evan Williams. And all three of these names, guys, as I said, um, all three of these uh, whiskeys are, are well-known names in the whiskey world. Um, Old Crow, which was uh, introduced by a guy named James Crow back in uh, the 1830s, I believe, 1835. Um, you know, it's been around a long time. The name's been around a long time. And, uh, and it's uh, pretty historical stuff, guys. Uh, this was the favorite um, favorite whiskey, supposedly, of uh, Ulysses S. Grant, uh, Mark Twain, um, and uh, several other people, too. But, you know, that's how far this whiskey goes back. And uh, read the back of it real quick. It says, when Dr. James Crow invented the sour mash process in 1835, he revolutionized uh, Kentucky bourbon making. Old Crow soon became the world's best-selling bourbon. Through the, through the years, Old Crow has often been imitated but never duplicated. Enjoy the true original. And uh, 
It says age for a full three years in new charred white oak barrels. And uh, it's an 80 proof whiskey, so uh, pretty uh, basic stuff there. Um, then uh, Jim Beam, of course, we all know Jim Beam. Um, cool to see the seven generations of uh, Beam family that have been uh, involved in making this whiskey. And uh, just says it's aged for four years uh, in the heart of Kentucky. Um, says it's uh, made for those who take their bourbon seriously. So uh, it's also 40 um, 40 ABV, 80 proof. And then Evan Williams, um, as I said, uh, this is four to six years old, somewhere around probably five years old or so. Um, and it's got a little more alcohol, not a whole lot more, but it's got 43% uh, ABV, um, 86 proof. So, um, and then uh, of course, Evan Williams himself, um, it's debated, you know, whether he was actually Kentucky's first distiller. Some think he was, some think he wasn't. But either way, he was one of the uh, the early ones, guys. I mean, we're talking late 1700s. So um, all of these guys were talking about uh, Evan Williams, Jim Beam, and uh, James Crow, who first came out with Old Crow before it was bought by Beam. Uh, these guys are 1700s, uh, earlier part of the 1800s. So very historical whiskeys right here. So we'll start off with the uh, the Old Crow here. Let's take a sip. Oh, actually, let's... Uh, Look at the color, it's pretty light, guys. It's um you know, it's a fairly light, it's not gold or anything, it's a little darker than that, maybe uh, like a light amber. Let's take a nose here. And on the nose, guys, we've got a a very uh simple, non-harsh bourbon uh, note to it. Got your corn sweetness. It definitely, like a lot of Jim Beam products, uh, definitely has a nuttiness about it. Um, I always get, you know, peanut brittle and things like that um, on the nose. And uh, some grain, definitely some grain. Like, uh, I always say, hey, um, say, hey. Uh, but I always say I get like a hay nose or like a straw nose on uh, on uh, Jim Beam type products. So, uh that's what I'm getting with this one, guys. Smells fairly young, but does not have a bad nose to it. Uh, very nice nose, in my opinion. Uh, just nice and simple. Let's take a sip. And on the palate, guys, it's... You know, it's pretty straightforward, good. Um, don't want to say uh, it doesn't taste really young, but it does have like, you know, a little bit of a rawness about it. Not in a bad way, but just, uh, you know, it's it's got a little bit of a grain uh, component to it, kind of a raw graininess to it. Uh, it has that corn sweetness. Uh, Definitely still has that uh, kind of peanutty, uh, peanut brittle type uh, type of note to it, and uh, definitely that grain, uh, and it's got a little bit of that you know that toffee type sweetness to it. So uh, good stuff, guys. Uh, Old Crow, in my opinion, for nine ninety nine, it's one of the better ones out there. Um, I've heard people say good and bad things about it. I don't pay too much attention uh, about the gossip. Want to try them out for myself, so. Recommend you do the same before uh, before you make any kind of judgment. All right, so move on to the uh, Jim Beam White Label here. Uh, so Old Crow Jim Beam White, and uh, Jim Beam is definitely um, a, a small shade darker than the. Uh, than the old crow is, but uh, they're not too far off. They're pretty close. So, uh, taking nose here on the uh, Jim Beam, and guys, to me, Jim Beam. I love Jim Beam. I mean, they they're always so consistent, even being mass produced. Um, the nose on this is, you know, I know I'm smelling a Beam product. Uh, yeah, I, I really love this stuff. It's good juice. Um, 
and ten ninety nine a bottle. Shoot, I mean that's that's one of the better ones out there for uh, for that price, guys. So, um, and you get you get a lot of the same things you get from the old crow nose. You know that um, corn sweetness uh, with the bit of nuttiness, bit of uh, like a the hay note, um, but you do get a uh, just a little bit more of a um, caramel type sweetness to it. Maybe a little bit of uh, like a small pinch of um, like brown sugar. And it just, it's, I love, I love the nose on this, you know, and different Jim Beam products as they age them. And, um, you know, it's, I think most of these, uh, their products have the same uh, mash bill. So, you know, as they age in different parts of the warehouse, you know, you get uh, you know, Baker's, Booker's, Knob Creek. Um, they just make good stuff, guys. Basil Hayden. Um, you know, it's just a lot of good stuff being made at Jim Beam. Let's take a sip. And on the uh, on the palette, you know Jim Beam White Label. It's not going to blow you away, um, good or bad. You know it's uh, nothing fancy, um, but it's it's just good whiskey, good reliable whiskey at a great price. Um, and maybe someday I'll put Jim Beam up against uh, Jack Daniels. Um, don't mean to offend anybody out there. I do. Enjoy Jack, uh, Jack Daniel products a lot, Jack Daniels. But for yeah, I think Jack uh, Jack's about seventeen bucks for the same size bottle out here compared to ten ninety nine. I'll save that extra few bucks and get myself uh, some Jim Beam. I just think it's really really good stuff. Jack is good, um, but I just don't think it's really got a whole lot more that would warrant that extra you know, five, six bucks. So my own opinion. Um, and maybe I'll put them head to head one day. I don't think I've, had, I've actually ever put them head to head when, uh, when sipping whiskey. So maybe I'll change my opinion. Uh, doubt it, but, um, you know, Jim Beam's just, just really good stuff guys. So take a sip and then uh, we'll go on to Evan Williams real quick. All right guys. So, Evan Williams. I have a special place in my heart for Evan Williams, guys. Um, this review, I just have to say, was inspired by the fact that these three whiskeys, I go back and forth, you know, I I buy a bottle of each one every now and then. It just depends on how I'm feeling at the time. Um, and I thought to myself, hey, you know, it'd be cool to, you know, put them all, you know, kind of up head to head, you know, or, you know, three ways this time. Uh, but it was only going to be Evan Williams versus Jim Beam, but then I was like, you know what? Old Crow. I love Old Crow. Um, so I want to put there, that in there too, kind of throw that hat into it uh, as well. Um, but um, Evan Williams, guys, I see uh, a couple reviewers out there. Um, if you guys are watching, hope you are. Um, I enjoy your reviews a lot, uh, both Jameson, um, Jameson Mokul, I uh, hope, uh, hope I'm saying your name right, um, but I saw you do an Evan Williams vs. Jim Beam review, I enjoyed it, and uh, kind of, uh, even though I was already kind of thinking about this review, it kind of inspired me, to, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's see what, we, uh, what we're dealing with here. So, um, between Jameson and then another reviewer that I like to watch, uh, uh, Ron Terrio, um, Ronald uh, Terrio. Um, Ronald, you review Ed, uh, Evan Williams quite a bit, and, um, and I think you're right on the money. You know, this is good stuff, good juice. Um, and I think, personally, I think uh, Jack sometimes, Jack Daniels is a little bit overrated, while Evan Williams doesn't always get the uh, credit it deserves. People think it's a bottom shelf whiskey, and a lot of people don't pay any attention to it for that reason, but it's 
it may have a bottom shelf price, but it's not bottom shelf whiskey. This is good stuff. It's the real deal. So let's get on to it. Um, so different company, of course, this is uh, Heaven Hill, but just wanted to kind of compare color a little bit. So it's definitely a shade darker, um, definitely more so than the Old Crow, but it's a shade darker uh, than the uh, uh, Jim Beam white label. It's back here. I'm not sure if it's getting in the camera or not, but um, definitely a shade darker than uh, the Jim Beam um, white label. Uh, at four to six years, probably has a little more barrel char to it. Um, let's uh, take a nose here. And it's funny, guys. It's a different, different company and all that, but it also has a little bit of that uh, that nuttiness that I get with the uh, with the uh, Jim Beam. But it's definitely its own uh, different spirit, totally different spirit bourbon. But you get a lot more uh, with uh, Evan Williams. You get a lot more um, like oak in the nose. More vanilla for me, um, uh, more of that sweetness, you know, like that caramel type sweetness, uh, brown sugar type notes. So uh, let's take a sip. Oh man. The Evan Williams to me, guys, is, I like Jim Beam a lot. I do. Evan Williams to me is a step up from Jim Beam. Um, I enjoy Evan Williams a lot. As I said, I think it's one of the more underrated. They're, they're getting some recognition out there, but not. you don't see them nearly as much as you see ads for Jim Beam or Jack Daniels or, you know, several others. Uh, but it just, it's a very solid whiskey. Um, very solid bourbon. They have other really good bourbons uh, in that whiskey line as well for Evan Williams. They have the 1783, which we've uh, reviewed. Um, they have a single barrel, which is very good and very affordable. I think their single barrel that I bought and uh, uh, reviewed on here a while back uh, was in the mid-20s or so, which is just insane. Uh, total steal for, uh, you know, for this stuff. Great value, so... Um, so out of the three of these guys, I mean, they're in order here on the table. You know, that's the order I put them in. Old Crow's really good. I really enjoy Old Crow. It's a great entry level, uh, whiskey. Good for mixing. You know, all three of these are good for mixing. Um, if that's the way you want to go. But as far as sipping neat, um, this is how I do, you know, I'd go, go Old Crow, um, last, uh, Jim Beam is a step up, definitely from the old crow, but Evan Williams to me is is uh, is the winner here. And um, for ratings, um, I would, let's see, Evan Williams to me, definitely the highest rated. I'd go old crow, probably uh, like an 83 out of 100. Uh, Jim Beam, probably an 80, probably an 85. Out of 100. And then Evan Williams, I'd give like an 88. Um, so my opinion, um, if you guys uh, have any feedback, want to kind of battle with me on that a little bit, uh, it's all fun, guys. So let's do it. Um, but three very good bottom shelf whiskeys here, um, at least price tag wise, quality wise, they're all a great value. Very good value. So try them all out, guys. Um, you know, see which one, you know, if any of these, or there's several others. Benchmark is a great one. Um, yeah, there, there are several uh, good deals to be had on the bottom shelf. So don't feel like you have to spend a bunch of money to get a good whiskey because that's, that's not the case. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Um, look forward to uh, doing the next, the next one, um, which I told you guys is going to be one of my favorite whiskeys uh, of all time. Uh, great, great value in this whiskey I'm going to review next time. So uh, hope you enjoyed the, uh, the best of uh, the bottom shelf here. Um, and I look forward to the feedback. Oh, geez. 
see if I can, uh, I guess I don't need to kill them all, but we'll see what we can do. It was the old crow. Um, but I always look forward to the feedback, guys. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. Please uh, check out my Facebook page as well. Um, the Working Man's Whiskey there on Facebook. Um, I try to post when I can, um, kind of post randomly on there. Uh, just, yeah, you know, if I have time, um, yeah, if I'm doing something, uh, kind of revolving around whiskey, you know, family parties, uh, you know, I'd like to talk about which whiskey we're doing at the time that we're sipping at the time and, uh, look forward to doing that. So I'm not going to kill all of these guys. Um, too much at once. Maybe I'll sip one off camera too, but uh, I'll kill the uh, Evan Williams here since this was my uh, my pick. So that's it for this one, guys. Look forward to talking to y'all soon. And uh, until next time, cheers.